to start out uh, CES interviews and going straight th to the OWC booth and meeting up with Larry O'Connor, the CEO of OWC. How are you doing, Larry? Doing great, doing great. And uh, it is a great first interview. Good to <laughs> see you again. Well, it's good to, to have your first voice, right? You're all energetic and bright-eyed right now. That's true. That's true. Come back in a couple hours. You know, I'm still going to be this way. Yeah, we'll see you the day after tomorrow. Uh, all right, so what do you have to show us this year? You know, we're starting with the simple stuff. You know, these are, uh, we call this the Klingon. I mean, it's a very, you know, it's, it's, it looks very, very simple. As you probably are wondering what this is for, but people have experienced disconnects with Type-C. You know, cables get bumped, they get tugged on. And in production environments, you know, that's kind of a problem. You know, this is a device you don't have to have anything special to, uh, to, to attach it to, to screw it in with. This will go on any Type-C drive even on the back of a lot of Type-C systems, and lets you stabilize the cable so that if somebody gives it a bump, gives it a tug, you don't have a disconnect and, and lose where you're transferring. So, very, very simple solution. It goes on the back of anything with Type-C, and it keeps that cable from wiggling from disconnecting. So, For the audio-only listeners, we're looking at a little tiny device. It's blue. It's uh, maybe a half an inch, three quarters of an inch long, and a half an inch wide that you stick to the back of a drive and then the USB-C connector stays in there tighter? Correct, and you can still, now this is not locking your cable in either, it's not a special cable, it uses any standard Type-C cable and it also lets you, you know, disconnect the cable as well. Now we didn't hear this, so this is not the perfect demo, but nonetheless, you have the benefit of having stabilization of your cable and you can still remove and swap cables at will as well. So is so. it basically just adding some friction to the to the connection? Is that all that is? It's some rubber in there? Yeah, it's got a little bit of rubber. How do I say it again? It, it very easy attaches to anything, but yeah, it, effectively it gives you that. I mean, here, without it, you know, you get a little bit of, you have play. I mean, that's there's nothing you can do about that. That is the port. That's not the device. You know, when you add this to it, now you have it in this nice, kind of this nice jacket for all practical purposes. Now it's on the back, and I mean, it does not have that play. Now it's stable. And you call that device the Klingon? We call it the Klingon. <laughs> you know, we're kind of out of this world inspired, so I mean, it's, it was kind of a, a clever play on uh, words. So. I like it. I like it. Okay, now getting into some more serious stuff. Everybody's got USB Type C now, and they want to have. Uh, oh, I was going to go to Travel Docs, but we'll go ahead with this. What is this? I was going to say, this is the production. This is our uh, Thunder, Thunderblade V4. This is super high speed storage, up to 8 terabytes. You know, we're, we introduced uh, Generation 2 this year. Generation 2 you know, still gives you all the performance, gives you all that, that fast uh, video editing capability, fast ingest, fast duplication capability. Plus, it runs you know, substantially cooler. Generation 2 now, you can even stack them and they stay running cool. So it's okay. faster. For the audio only listeners, this basically looks like he's holding a heat sink. I don't believe there's really a drive in there. <laughs> it's a bunch of blades. Yes, it's all flash up to 8 terabytes. It's now about 33% lower cost than it was a year ago. So it's for somebody who needs performance, somebody who needs whether you're doing live editing or you're just doing ingest. You do duplication really quick so you can get those files on their way. You know, this is the product that plugs, plays, and, and runs it all. That's the whole promise of uh, Thunderbolt 3, right? Is the promise of Thunderbolt 3 up to about 2,500 megabytes a second sustained. Oh my gosh, you're, you're making that number up. I'm not making that number up. It'll burst to 2.8 gigabytes a second, so very, very, very Holy fast. You know, very, very fast. And then, of course, you know, the products that you know, let you do all your work you know, when you're on the road, you know, like our travel dock. You know, it works with the iPad Pro, it works with any MacBook Pro, MacBook, Chromebook, you know, PCs with Type-C. And that gives you a couple of USB ports, it gives you uh, HDMI 4K video out. And I'll tell you something that's really, really important, in addition to the fact you have an SD reader as well, it lets you plug your power through it. There's lots of, there's lots of products out there that call themselves docks that really aren't docks. And they're not docks because they're not power delivery enabled. So when you need to charge your laptop, you can't use the port that your that your hub's plugged into. With the with our travel dock, you know you can plug in through that. That is, this is a true power delivery enhanced enabled dock. So you can plug power through it and you can charge your book, power your books, you know, while using all the ports. You don't have to disconnect it when you need the charge. And that's a big difference between a dock and a hub. Or a hub I always wondered what the definition between the two was, because they get used interchangeably quite a bit. Yes, they do. You know, hubs are pretty dumb. Docks actually, in the case of power delivery enabled dock, it actually knows what power is, it actually communicates with the computer, you know, what power is being drawn by the different ports, what the devices are, so the system intelligently is aware of what's going on. Now, I, I hear a lot of people whining about having to have all these dongles and everything, but to me, this is magical that I've got, got a, a USB Type-C port on a, a MacBook Pro 
and all of a sudden I've got HDMI out, I've got an SD card reader, I've got H, uh, US, two USB-A ports, and power to charge the thing at the same time. I mean, that's, that's amazing. You couldn't do that before. It's unbe unbeatable. It takes one port, add all these ports, and you can charge two. And you can take it from your MacBook Pro to your MacBook, to your MacBook Air, to your iPad. You're ready to go. And t they need to get the phone in the, in the game. Then we're all set, right? Yeah, and that's coming. But for under 50 bucks, you know, it gives you, for on the go, it gives you all the ports you need. Now, when you get back to the office, get back oh, to Let me tell house. them real quick oh, uh, sure. to the audio listeners. This, this uh, box is only about a half an inch thick, three quarters maybe. And I mean, smaller than a deck of cards. And it's really, really light. So that'd be really easy to toss in your bag. Yep, and it's under fifty dollars, and there is nothing in that price range. How much did you say? Under fifty dollars, actually. Under fifty dollars. Yeah, street price typically around thirty-nine, and there's nothing in that price range that supports that true power delivery, which is very, very important. There's I'm glad you uh, said that three times because I kept hearing a hundred and fifty, under oh, fifty. So under I'm glad. fifty, under fifty. You know what? If even for one hundred fifty, I tell you, there are products that there are products that cost about that that don't do what this does. But under fifty bucks, thirty-nine dollars street. You know, this is great for being on the road. And then when you get back, though, but get back to the house, get back to the office, get back to you know a place where you kind of you got your whole setup going. You know, we have our ten port docks, which include you know their own external power. Sorry, I pulled the mic away from him there. We're holding, up, holding it up now. Sure, this is our ten port uh, dock. This is Type C. You know, this gives up to 60 watts to any laptop, to an iPad Pro, you know, to a Chromebook, anything again with Type C. So this will, power, this will give you power and charge and run your system. And then for a little more heavy, and this is up to 10 gigabits, yeah, about one gigabyte per second sustained transfer throughout all the ports combined is what it supports. I'm turning around to see the other port. Oh, look, there's a, uh, what was that called again? The Klingon. A Klingon on the back. All right, so it's got three uh, USB-A ports. We've got a Type-C, is that, that's display, uh, display on that one. Oh, it's got uh, display port also. Yes, it All includes right. you know, the... Uh, have a and an SD card on the front, and a uh, headphone jack, and another USB-A. Gives you everything. So you get home, one cable, plugs in, I mean, for power, for audio, for USB devices, for your video, your network. Everything is all right there. And it comes with an HDMI adapter, but for folks that have mini display port, you know, Apple uh, cinema displays and such, plugs in direct native. And we are, and this is, I don't want to go super technical, but we're DP++, whether it's on our uh, USB Type-C dock or our Thunderbolt docks. And what that simply means is you don't need an active adapter if you want to connect to HDMI oh, or DVI yeah, yeah, yeah. or VGA or, of course, Apple's mini display port. It does the work inside. It's, it's, it's already got that capability versus being a dumb display port. I don't mean dumb, I needed that a couple of years ago to yeah. exist. <laughs> We've always done it that way because in the Apple space, I mean, people expect that. You know, you've had display ports on Macs for almost, well, for a decade until and Apple And those displays away. never die, ever. They last forever, the Apple displays. Right, they never died and all... You figure out what to do with them. <laughs> right, you just keep on using them. But the ports, the adapters that everybody got with those machines were passive because all you had to do is, you know, do you want to plug a VGA, DVI, HDMI, whatever it was, it was a very, just a passive case because the system was doing all the work. And of course, we maintain that. So you don't, number one, you don't have to worry about copyright issues. You know, all the, how to say that the encoding is, is passed right through because the chip's doing the work. You're not doing an active conversion, which, and again, I'm going way into the weeds, but. You know, we like the weeds on my show. Awesome. Those don't work for you. Well, yeah, what's the price on this one? This guy's street is 119. 119, wow. 119, and that, so includes, that includes a 60 watt power supply, or actually a 100 watt power supply that'll give your computer 60 watts. So, so here's a question I always get tangled on. So I use a MacBook Pro, it's got an 85 watt power supply. I can sure. still use the 60 watt, it just takes longer, right? Absolutely positive, correct. The treasure is yes. You don't need to have an 85 watt out to charge, just, your computer can take 85 watts, but it's happy with 60 as well. I Just on a lark, I tried charging my MacBook Pro using the charger that came with my new iPad Pro, and it worked. It took all night, but it worked. That's a lot, yeah, that, that's like, you know, 25, 20, 25 watts somewhere right. in there. Much, much slower than this even. Sure. So, and what is, so you've got two docks here, so what is this one called? It's just our USB-C dock. I mean, that's it's our okay. OWC USB 10-port dock. I mean, we try to keep things simple. I mean, that's, that's what it does. It gives you 10 ports of great connectivity. One cable connects you 10 ports to the world. Okay, but this is not a Thunderbolt dock. No, but this one is. Ah. Well, look at me just being your straight man here. Straight woman. As we move right on, yes, down the line, you you lead me right on. I like it. This is our 14 port dock. You know, this is Thunderbolt 3, so you take full advantage, get the full advantage of the 40 gigabits that Thunderbolt 3 offers. So it's got Type C ports. You know, for 10 gigabits, it's got the back. You of course have your network ports. You have video. You've got, I mean, you've got it all. Quite frankly, digital, it's got audio, digital audio. Yeah. 
Did I miss Ethernet? Did I miss uh, how to say a second Thunderbolt 3 port? A mini display port with DP++ again, so you can support everything you know, very natively, very reliably. I, I, I missed it. Is that uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet or gigabit? This is this is gigabit Ethernet. You know, 10G. We have. I, I don't know who's got 10 gigabit anyway, but I just wondered. It's funny you should ask. You know, we just acquired Akidio, and the Akidio Pro Dock has a, a, a 10G uh, Ethernet port. So. I saw that announcement. That's interesting. You know, it, it fills in. I mean, it's a real complimentary, how do I say, uh, coming together. Oh, yeah. good, good. So we're very, very excited to, uh, how do I say, to integrate those products into our line and, quite frankly, come up with even better creations. Now, I've been reviewing uh, uh, docs. I haven't reviewed your Thunderbolt 3 doc. Uh, but what is... Uh, yeah, I think we should. Um, the thing I found interesting was the ones I liked the best were the ones that had the most USB-A USB ports, because at this instant in time, I have so many USB-A devices. But I have a feeling over time I'm going to be spitting on those and wanting the ones that have more USB-C, probably. Well, the Type-C is we get in the, uh, the Gen 1, I'm sorry, the Gen 2 Type-C products where you get faster performance, the connector is nicer, the only goes in, you know, it actually goes in one way, you know, both ways. I love uh, that. You can't go wrong that way. The only problem with it is you have to look in the end of it to find out if it's Lightning or USB-C still. Yeah, it is kind of, if you have Apple, if you have the iPhones and things, it, it, there is a little bit of similarity there. Again, back to we need to get it off the iPhone, then everybody will be happy, right? Yeah, well, we'll probably see Type-C in the iPhones, you know, come this fall, so. That's what they're saying, huh? It's crazy. I mean, man, why didn't they just start similar to there? But I bet the spec wasn't ratified when they started, right? It wasn't, but it's been around for a couple. Well, I'm not going to go into Apple. Say it's just we went from the dock connector to Lightning, and now we have a whole new. If we were running Apple, right? Indeed, indeed. All right. So this is the Thunderbolt 3 dock, and what is Correct. this? Uh, oh, it's also got. We didn't say SD card and micro SD on the front for your GoPros. Correct, and that's all UHS-4, so very, very fast readers as well. UHS-4, oh, okay, the speed. Yeah, the, the, the high-speed readers, I mean, you're getting, the, you're, you're getting, you know, five, six hundred, I'm sorry, four or five hundred megabytes a second it'll do from a, a capable card. And this guy's 85 watts, so you're full power on a MacBook Pro or any system that needs that extra juice. So if you want to have fast charging, that's really important. I mean, this covers that as well. And food for thought, I mean, most people that use docks, you come in, you plug your computer in, and then you're working. I mean, it's going to be there overnight. It's going to be there for a while. You're home. I mean, a few people come in. I mean, it, it was interesting. Our previous dock only had the 60 watts, but it was something else. Some, certain people would get all up, oh, my gosh, there's only 60 watts. It's like, are you coming in? you got to have that fast charge for an hour, and then you're running right back out the door? Probably not. Yeah, I don't think I've ever done that. Yeah, you've been on the road. You're coming in, you're plugging in, now you're at home base. You're, you're, you're going to be there for a little while. You, I mean, unless you were told, unless you thought about it and timed it, you never would have known the difference. Yeah, yeah, I bet not. Absolutely. But we're happy no. to bring 85 out. And just to make it very, very clear, the reason our original docks were 60 watt, you know, the power delivery spec only supported 60 watt initially. Oh, you know, okay. There was not ratification support for above 60 watt that Apple would approve. Oh, I did not know that. Okay, so what's it ratified up to now? Now we're 85 watts. Well, well technically oh, 100 okay. watts. Okay. Well, I need 85 watts now. And we got it for you. And we got it. You got it all. We there you go. feel the power. And the uh, the USB Type C part, uh, the US, I'll get it yet. Yeah. Type C port on the front is USB C 3.1. Is that what that says? Yeah, 3.1 Gen 2s. You get the full 10 gigabits out of it, and of course you get uh, 15 watts. All uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports, all USB uh, Gen 2, uh, 3.1 Gen 2 ports put out the full 15 watts, so you can fully bus power whatever you're going to plug into there, and that's very very important. And something else about you talk about a lot of USB Type A ports and USB ports in general, you got to have the bandwidth for them, and we make sure all these ports have plenty of bandwidth. And we brought a th going all the way back to our Thunderbolt 2 dock. That was a differentiator. You know, people put lots of ports on them, but then when you try to kind of you know put them all together, you need to actually access simultaneously. You find out that there's not enough bandwidth there. Oh, okay. You can okay. do live video streams across all these simultaneously. You can max out you know drive performance, or you can use that. Thunderbolt gives us 40 gigabits, and we make sure that 40 gigabits is wherever you need it on our dock. So um, the last, sorry, oh, the. Um, that was a, the last question I want to ask you was how much is that going to cost? This guy is two ninety nine. So okay, so the, the standard price that Thunderbolt three docks are coming in at, right? Yeah, that, that's the, just, that's about the standard price point. You're right, but there's nothing out there that this this sleek and with this many ports in that price range. I mean, it's this is priced really really sweet for uh, what it does. Well, very good. Well, thank you so much for your time, Larry. I really enjoyed this. Uh, I'm getting the uh, I'm getting the the news here from Steve. So uh, <laughs> tell people where they can find for the three people who don't know where OWC is. Uh, where can they find you? They can visit us now at OWC.com and learn about what? everything. So we got MaxSales.com, and of course, you want to learn about all the brands, everything we've got coming together, our new 
products, the different softwares, all the cool stuff. OWC.com is, is the hub for everything now. Or stop by when you're at MaxDoc, right? Or stop by MaxDoc, for sure. We'll see you this summer. All right, thanks a lot. You're very welcome.